Check, please. Hey guys, welcome back to Everything Money. Paul, what a weird, sort of somewhat scary month we've been in with stocks. January was horrendous. Scary for whom? Well, for the rest of uh, for the rest of the world, not so much you. I can imagine when you were in the winery, just sipping on uh, the, the you know the wine and looking Throwing at three hundred dollar bills of peasants going yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at your NASDAQ short, fill your pockets. I want to uh, explain that, by the way, why I changed from S&P to NASDAQ, but we'll go into that. We saw a lot of so-called growth stocks get absolutely clobbered in the past few months. And uh, we see a lot of YouTubers now backtracking on what they've always said. Of course, you said that would so happen let me too. ask a question. Um, meet Kevin sold all his Tesla, didn't he? Yep. Well, he bought 1.8 million back. Yeah. So he, oh, yeah. so now the stock rebounded a little bit. So he sold it when it was down. When it rebounded, he bought back. Literally the dumbest thing you can do. <laughs> and investing 101. If you like a company and the stock goes down and the thesis hasn't changed, you don't sell it. Well, and if the, he says, well, the thesis did change, then why'd you buy it back? Paul, the yeah. hardest part is he was saying exactly what you were, which is why so many folks are a little upset is because he's mimicking what you were saying, which is what most- most. What's he more, saying? What you just said, never sell. I guess one of his key things is don't don't sell. So that's a whole other story. I but, mark my words, meet Kevin will be completely out of Tesla at some point in the next five or 10 years, completely out. And he'll justify it some way by saying, well, it's not the growth opportunity. Well, then you shouldn't have said that it's going to sell for 70 times PE 10 years from now. Because when you're saying that, you're saying it has tons of growth. Mo, what were you going to say? Yeah, if it's a three thousand dollars stock, why are you selling anything? Four thousand. Four thousand. Yeah. Why are you selling anything? So, Paul, Find give it value. We, we we people come to our channel when they need fondled and coddled by you in those hard times. I prefer people, the fondling. People turn to those financial advisors when uh, the the, sh the poop hits the fan, and uh, and they need to wonder what's going on in the world. So, provide that for me and our viewers. Is I think people are scared. You know, like I had a. I had a portfolio that once said four hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars into my long-term retirement. It's down to, it's down to three hundred and ten at the moment, or not three ten, four ten, four ten. So it's oh. it's down Damn, in like, the last six do? months. <laughs> no, no, not three ten, four ten. But I mean, it's like a, it's out of twelve dollars. <laughs> I guess the concept of people watching is it can't go down at all, and now I'm just losing money. So, so what we have now is complacency. We have what happens in every major bull market. We don't have a memory of losing money. I want everybody to remember one thing. Psychologists have done these tests before. People feel losses twice as much as they enjoy the gains. That's absolutely right. In fact, one of the people, this guy named Benjamin, who does YouTube channels, he just did the, he, he did a whole video on how the like the the thumbnail game in YouTube is so much scarier when it's on the way down. You know, people are just burning money and explosions. And then so that fear of losing, why does that dig so much not deeper? Not a puppy, in? not like, oh, the market's great. And you have a picture of a puppy and you're looking at its face. Yeah, but well, with that said, so he said the same thing, Paul, is people have that fear. But in essence, they're very less fearful in investing in companies where your downside risk is already huge. So they don't understand that. Because what we all want to do is believe the story that we've told. We tell the story because we don't have an experience of losing money. All the guys, in these, look at Mo. Mo isn't even old enough to, Mo, Mo, it's funny, Mo's never really experienced a bear market. I mean, yeah, COVID happened, that was bad, but That's it was very quick. <laughs> what was that? That ain't a bear market. <laughs> that wasn't a bear market. I mean, yes, it was a big crash that happened in one month, the biggest crash we had in one month period, and then it was right back up again to all-time highs, up by 50%, mm -hmm. in terms of from the previous all-time high. Right. Guys, I actually switched my short from an S&P to NASDAQ for two reasons. One, tax loss harvesting. I could exercise my S&P short, but still go into a better, what I thought was a better investment. I said late last year to Mo and my brother, I wish I could short the, the NASDAQ more. I wish I could short the NASDAQ because I like the, Na the NASDAQ was way more overpriced than the S&P to me. The NASDAQ 100 QQQ. So on January 5th, I exited my S&P short and I, bought, and I sold short the NASDAQ. And it has gone phenomenally well. Why? As I've said in a lot of videos in the past, we have what, 1,300 videos now? Mm -hmm. I've said before, when stocks fall, the most overpriced companies fall the hardest. I truly believe that at some point in the next five or 10 years, Tesla will sell for one-tenth or one-fifth what it's at today. It will have an 80 or 90% drop in the next five or 10 years is my guess. Now, can I be wrong on that one? Sure. But if you have 100 Teslas, There'll be 89. Look at ARC. Well, 100, uh, again, not to be confused at home, if you have 100 companies that sound like, the, you know, the, the, the built up 
excitement of Tesla and you invest in all of them, it just simply doesn't work. It might it might work on one, but it won't make up for the 99 that it doesn't. Look at that moron, Kathy Wood, and her ARK investment. It's currently at 75 bucks. The high was 160. The low, 64 bucks. And the low was recent. Guys, she said, you don't understand disruption. No, Kathy, you don't understand business. Can I make a... So yesterday, she, she put a blog post out about like reassuring her investors. I, I saw said, of an interview as well. Go ahead. She said... Now we are in deep value territory. Oh my God. It's like, okay, so she does doesn't understand value, value. Mean like you have to make money. Like no. 17 out of the 20 companies don't make money. And she's like, now it's value. It's like, what, what the hell? What is, I think just, we, we did a video. Crazy. Yeah. We did a video a few months ago where we looked at our top 20 holdings. 17 weren't even making money. Yeah. How, how, I mean, maybe it's value. I don't know. But this is the point. These people have an excuse. Anytime something happens, there's going to be an excuse. Like Paul said in the beginning of the video, when whatever happens and me, Kevin sells all of his Tesla shares in five to 10 years, there's going to be a reason excuse why he did so. But then when I sit there and go, yeah, cause it's so down 90% and you guys didn't believe that was going to happen. they are like, Oh, well, okay. Sounds good mm-hmm. to, to, to comment to Kathy. She was saying, look at my performance when it was at 160. This is proof. The concept works. Well, that's the case. The proof the concept doesn't work is right now. We don't go that. Just like when people thank me for my stock picks, go, Paul, I bought this and it's up 10%. I'm like, guys, don't thank me. Well, Paul, when, thank me 10 years from now. When will we start the I told you so parade? Because we're oh, already don't getting- Don't you worry. I was going to say, we get- I am licking getting, my fingers. We're getting so many comments already, Paul. Thank you for getting me out of- Guys, Neo, it hasn't even out started. Out of Paul and Tear, out of Tattooed Chef. Why do you keep saying Paul and Tear? Because it's hilarious, Paul. Okay, so it's because of me. I, but I thought maybe I was mispronouncing it. You make 100 Somebody times more revenue than Paul and Tear <laughs> anyway. <laughs> no. Nobody came up with- Volunteer, Sethla, and Moblox. Yes. Well, Sethla was um, MJ's wife. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> and what was the second? What was the third one? Moblox. Like Moblox. Roblox. Oh, gotcha. But I guess Guys, when will that? I mean, because people are already thinking. It. We're not even close. Okay, great. We're not even close to the. To the I told you, guys. I'm just warning you right now for those viewers out there who like me. Oh, be careful. You will hate me at some point in the future because of how mean I am going to be. Uh oh. There's somebody in the group chat that we know. I want nothing more than for him to lose all of his money because his arrogance and his ineptitude on understanding financials is so bad. So, so bad. The only way he's going to learn is by losing a lot of money. Guys, the sad part is that's how we learn our lessons. That's how I learned my lessons. Mm -hmm. That's how I sat there and said, wait a second. I believed all this hype. It didn't work out. What's the reason? And I innately had this value investing idea of saying, what, is, what does cash flow mean? And when I started to connect the two, I was like, holy cow, this makes sense. It's just the way it has to be, unfortunately. The meat Kevins of the world and the, uh, Tom, they have to lose a lot of money. And I'm hoping that when they do, they look at it as a way of saying, okay, hype didn't work. 70 PE for a $3 trillion company, a 4,000 share company does not make sense. By the way, 70 PE was 10 years from now. It's currently at 300 PE on Tesla. It doesn't make sense. Something has to give. Mm-hmm. Right? Well, that was the title of the video. This is why we need a crash. Yes. The title of which video? The meet, our meet Kevin response. To his, yes, that his was numbers. a big one. Because we need idiots to be wiped out. We need to clean the market of it's easy. You just buy something and it goes up. The economy... Is in a very good state, theory. I mean, but jobs are abundant. I mean, that jobs are, I mean, for the first time in how, first time in my life, I've never seen employees have such control over their future and their pay as they do today. Right? Mm-hmm. Have you ever seen this? It's definitely different times. Okay. That's fine. That's great. I love it. I love it for the employees. But just like that, there's going to be a restructuring at some point where all of a sudden there's going to be way more people. You're telling me that we're going to have 3.6 or 3.9% unemployment forever? No, of course not. There are cycles, guys. Just like stocks, there are cycles. We've seen an unprecedented 10-year run in stocks. We've seen an unprecedented rebound from what was, cons- what was the biggest crash in the economy since even before the Great Depression. But all of a sudden it went away like that? Does that even make sense? It's like saying, I got cancer and I was cured three days later. Mm. Come on, that doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. It's okay to have bad times. We're getting a barrage. Like I said, we're getting a barrage of, of messages in our community on Instagram, everything money investing. You know, thank you for getting me out of some of these stocks. I didn't get you, really, you out of anything. You really saved us. On- I just explained a process that makes sense to me. And if you buy into it, awesome. If you don't buy into it, I get it. 
you're not the right place at the right time or there are other, look at Mo. Mo trades with charts a lot. I've never done that until now. Never, ever done that. There are multiple ways to skin a cat. The, the, the risk you get is when you become like Jim Cramer, who is a day trader, but then tries to bring in fundamentals into it. He called Kathy Wood a genius February of 2021. What was their all-time peak? Hold my beer. Hold my beer real quick. I think, it, I think he said that February, I think he said that February of 2021. What's this date right here? Um, the all-time high. What's that date? February 12th, 2021. On August 4th. Uh oh What's the, the all-time high? $85 for Robin Hood. Right there. Peak. This is the peak. He said, he tweeted out and he said, Mad money. We love Robin Hood. Buy Robin Hood, this and that. And today it's at what? $13. There you go. Is it? Fourteen sixty one. Oh, I was wrong by by ten. Damn! What if you got Paul? Oh my God! I mean, rarely do we stack up to these huge YouTubers. With just like I got, you got to. But what what happened to all the people that bought all these stupid company companies? Listen, the great news is we have millions of people a month who watch our uh, watch our videos. Yeah, and if it affects one out of a hundred where they go, oh, wait, what? This doesn't make sense to me. That's great. Wouldn't this turn? I guess I'm seeing people that are turned off. This, the stock market is just too kooky. And I'm like, well, yeah, if you're investing in companies that don't make any money and they're just like pa Palantir, like Paul, people are making fun of you called Palantir a $5 company. It got to 11. I'm like, we're almost home to your ridiculously conservative tattooed chef. I mean, when did I call Palantir a, a $5 company, by the way? Earlier this year. I know. Can you, can you pull up an exact um, a date for me? Was it February? What's the price now? It is currently at fourteen dollars, and in February, January it was of eleven last week. Yeah, what was it? Yeah, last January week. of twenty twenty one. It was thirty nine bucks. So Seth, I don't remember exactly what we do. So many videos, I don't remember exactly what price I said for Palantir. I really don't have a clue. The bottom line is, I wasn't buying. I wasn't pro Palantir at any price because I didn't understand how it justified any price. The, the shares outstanding increasing so. Now it's down from 39 to, to 14. It got to 11 last week. Does that mean it's over? No. If they all of a sudden start generating cash flow, and doing, every single company that I talk about today that I bash, if they're around in, in 10, 20 years, I will probably be a buyer of their stock at some point. Because it'll take a, everybody giving up on them. And that will happen. If you don't believe me, Google every hype stock from 2000 that was still around in 2010 or 15. It will look like a screaming deal in 2010 and 15, even though everybody hates it. And when it was the worst deal, everybody loved it. Just remember that. We need to have it so that everybody hates the stock. Everybody hates the investment. Real estate was considered toxic in 2009. The real estate I bought in 2009, I'm still making 30, 40, 50% returns on. And I never have stopped. Not just because it's been 10 years, 11 years, 12 years later. It's just because I bought them so cheap. When things were worst, perceived to be worst, I made the most money. When things are perceived to be the best, you make the least amount of money because you're paying more money. At the end of the day, every investment is affected by how much you pay for it. The less you pay, the better your return. That's it. Because return is profit divided by investment. Right? Yeah, it's that simple. The lower this number is, the higher the overall number is. It's just simple math. And it's hilarious, Paul. We, we, we actually were laughing because we did some videos on Neo recently, and you, you were almost saying it, it might even be reaching a, a buy zone because it's cr crashed down so much. You yeah, know? I know. It's like, Isn't that funny? So Neo's what? Is it like $13 a share also? It went way up yesterday. Didn't they report like wonderful deliveries or something? Yeah. And by the way, to that comment though, Mo, as Seth called me earlier today about Tesla, Paul, they're crushing their numbers. Great. Crush your numbers. You can still overpay for a company that crushes its numbers. If you just care that they crush your numbers, pay $20 trillion for Tesla. Oh, that's ridiculous. When How is that it, any yeah. more ridiculous? When does than, it not become ridiculous? When does it not ridiculous? What's the number. line where it doesn't become ridiculous? At some point, you have to sit there and say, this is the line. That line is determined based on a present value of all future cash flow. And that's it, the difference. Along those lines, Paul, that line's never been the line. It, Tesla has always been, quote unquote, what we thought expensive, but it's never been corrupt. People are still. Arguing at every position of, of its price, they're still saying it's a great price, but you say like... And a criticism of me is Tesla is worth more than I thought it was worth what it was selling for seven years, but it took seven, eight years and crushing it to justify its price from seven, eight years ago. That's the difference. Mm. That's the difference. It's so, still a car company. So for our, um, our fear, fearful users out there who maybe haven't gone through what you've gone through over the past couple decades and seen down markets... 
what is the mindset? I'm definitely getting uh, Instagram messages. Should I invest in now or should I wait? Now it's crashing. What do I do? Help 80, me. 90, 80, 90% of your money, dollar cost average into low cost ETFs. Don't even look at it. Just roll with it. If this process makes sense to you, if most process of charts makes sense to you, <clears throat> take 10 or 20% of your money and start doing it. Learn a process. Process wins over the long run. Kathy Wood has no process. Saying disruption is not a process. All of a sudden, now she talks about value. All of a sudden, now she talks about value when her stock is down over 50%. Kathy. Oh, no, Paul. Oh. Stop. You can't bring up value. It's insulting to real value investors. Don't ever use that word. <laughs> we say disruption to be funny. You don't deserve to use that word. You are a moron. And you will probably not be even talked about in 10 years because you are a moron. Find the process that works for you. Stick to that process. This process is I always tell people, if this doesn't speak to you, I'm great with that. Mm -hmm. But don't try to argue with me that two plus two is seven. It's not seven. Don't try to argue with me that investment is not the present value of all future cash flow. It 100% is. Even in the world of disruption, present value of all future cash flow. These guys all care about disruption, but then they go to the numbers to justify their disruption. The numbers don't matter. But why do you use the numbers to justify the disruption? I don't get that. That's speaking out of both ends of your arse. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I'm angry. I mean, in the end, you know, it's funny. In the beginning of the video, you talked about arrogant people. And people say that about you. Oh, There's absolutely. Arrogant. People yeah. say it about me. Yeah. The other day, uh, uh, Lisa and I were talking. So Lisa's my girlfriend. And we were talking. And she said something like, you know, some people will say like, uh, you know, you're arrogant. And I just don't believe them. Like, well, I do sound very arrogant. I get that 100%. Mm-hmm. There's no doubt about that. But the difference is you see this personality. What you don't see, it, I just got a text yesterday from, uh, so I'm selling my house. I got a text yesterday from the realtor oh saying, Jesus, you have a lot of books. And I was like, yeah, this arrogant guy who thinks he knows everything still reads a ton. If I know everything, why would I read? Yeah, it's always it, a joke about that. I was that. thinking about that today. You know, it, It's not a game, but like I think having known you for so long now is you do get arrogant when you have a certain level of experience. You've hundreds of millions of dollars have changed hands. Three, 400 unit apartment complexes has gone in and out of your company. Uh, and, and then someone who watches Tesla videos on YouTube is going to tell you how oh, it is. That fires but you But it doesn't up. bother me. You know why? Gary Mishuris, I'm worth way more than Gary Mishuris. Gary Mishuris is a much better investor than me. Mm -hmm. Mo and I combined have 50 times what Gary Mishuris has. Right? Yeah. But Gary is a better investor. Yeah. Because he has a better process than I do. Mm. Right? Yeah. He's a better process than I do. To me, it's about the process. There are better, there are better day traders in our bid and ass nation than Mo. Yeah. They have way less money than Mo, but they have a they're they're better at it, yeah. right? Yeah. That's no. it. You ever okay. see the movie Forget Paris? Paul. Oh, yes, right. I directed that movie. <laughs> yeah. So so in it, he uh, Billy Crystal gets kicked out of the Kareem Abdul Jabbar, like and he's like, I feel like Billy Crystal going, You're out, you're out. Throughout, you're out throughout the hot dog vendor. <laughs> yeah. It was Kareem's sending off game. He's um, like, You're rejecting me for my sending off game? Yeah, I mean it's just great. It's a great it's a great move. That's how I feel at some point I'm like, you're a moron. Or in the movie Half Baked, when the guy's quitting, he goes, F you, F you, you're cool, F you, I'm out. Like I feel that same way. It's just mm -hmm. like, well. Listen, this is my personality. Warren Buffett has much of... There's Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger. Charlie Munger is much more of the blunt... Oh, just like you. Like, well, I don't, I, don't think, I don't think he's as extreme as me. But he says some... Warren Buffett is the, how do I get everybody in the room to like me a lot? That's why people... When Warren Buffett compliments somebody, I don't take it with a grain of salt. Like if Warren Buffett came out tomorrow and said, Paul's a genius, I'd feel good about that. But I'd be like, is he just saying that because he wants to be liked? Because the first thing in how to win friends and influence people is essentially kiss their ass, yes. right? Charlie Munger is more likely to be like, if Charlie Munger said, that guy's a smart guy, I'm going to take that. That to me is going to matter. Well, we've heard from people inside Charlie's inner circle that he uses a lot more F-bombs in his private life than public. So Correct. Well, you use them on YouTube, so congrats. Yeah, so how many times have we bleep me out? That's our take more. on the market. We'll keep you updated. Um, there will be a coming to a, a Jesus. Jesus moment when uh, these Jesus. <laughs> stocks go down even further. He's my landscaper. <laughs> Cancel. Oh. <laughs> canceled now they're coming after was that you. racist no i guess it is funny it is it is your landscaper yeah in mexico yeah mm -hmm. all right that's our take uh if you want to cancel it's us you can click below <laughs> it is a fact. now we're all of a sudden talking like there, there was a book um there was a book where are we go called uh 
unbiased or something like that. Yeah. Written by a guy in the early 2000s. He was talking about how he was like saw such, he was a liberal, but he saw such, the bias was so bad, like that there was a news report about Jamaica and the media insisted on calling everybody in Jamaica African Americans. And they're like, but they're not Americans. But they were so big on oh, being right. PC that they had to say African Americans. They couldn't just say black. Or Jamaicans. Or Jamaicans. <laughs> And I can't sit there and say Jesus, even though we have a gardener in Mexico named Jesus. He's your gardener in Mexico. But I will be called racist. That's exactly where he's supposed to be and where his name name is supposed to be. So, hmm, okay. If you're drawn by numbers and this resonates with you, you can get the software. You can join our community. Paul, tell them how. So we created the software because when we first started this channel, one of the most common questions we got was, how do I get the data behind you? Because we were using another service. So we invested hundreds of thousands, hired four or five developers, created the software. It's all available fully on your mobile phone. You get everything we did in the video. You get everything that's coming up here, including the current retirement calculator, a pillar portfolio, exclusive daily content. One, two videos a day from Seth Mower I mm-hmm. on the app. You get the eight pillar portfolio. You get everything that's coming up. But most importantly, guys, the biggest thing is most of our users are alone in how they think. That's why they're drawn to our channel. But when you don't have people to talk to you, it can feel like a very lonely road out there. We have our amazing chat community with over 6,000 people that you can talk to about all your investment ideas. And guess what, guys? It's not everybody agrees with us. We have people on there who say, Paul, you're wrong about crypto. You're wrong about Tesla. Great. It's about engaging in conversation and talking about your investments. This is all available on your mobile phone for $1 per day. If you can just increase your returns by 1% or 2% or decrease your losses by 1% or 2% a year, mm-hmm. it will lead to hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars in retirement. It's a no-brainer, $1 per day, two ways to sign up, everythingmoney.com or Patreon. The benefit of everythingmoney.com is that you don't pay sales tax yet because we're not big enough. So go sign up and that price you pay today is locked in for the future at that level. The price goes up every month. You'll stay at the price you paid for that level. So sign up now, everythingmoney.com. Go sign up, $1 per day, no brainer. All right, that's our take on the market. Uh, if you're in our community- it's Nice having the show. <laughs> I was gonna say, if you're in our community, you're used to all this. So um, we did this for you. You know we love you. See you next video.